Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for a Prophecy in the News Daily update, and uh, this one is being made on the 30th for release on Friday, August 31st, just to kind of keep you updated. And as promised, we have as our guest again today from Israel, Avi Lipkin. Avi, always good to have you here. Great, always to be here. And when I talk to Avi, I always get a, a kind of a fresh new infusion uh, of love for modern Israel and also a, an infusion of news from Israel helps me understand what's going on over there and what's going on right now involves uh, somebody by the name of Mahmoud Abbas. Correct. Who is Mahmoud Abbas? Well he's a terrorist and he denies that the Holocaust ever took place and he also denies that there was ever a temple on the Temple Mount. You know, the first temple of Solomon, second temple of Herod, never existed. It's all a figment of the wild Jewish Whoa. imagination. Oh, what a wild imagination. Now, Mahmoud Abbas is not just anybody, not just any Arab off the street. He's got a leadership position, right? Yeah, he's the head of the Palestinian Authority, and supposedly the guy who's going to lead the Palestinian state when it gets created. Okay. You remember George W. Bush used to say Palestinian state in 2008? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Never happened. Never happened. And it never will. Hmm. You know why? Because if the leadership of the Palestinians is psychotic, can you do a deal with psychotic people? Well, not really. Now, why is he psychotic? Because he dreams, he doesn't dream about castles in the air. He lives in castles in the air. He is totally disconnected from reality. And, you know, the, um, I am f forming a Judeo-Christian political party to run for the Knesset. This is the fourth book out of six books that I've written, which you offer, of course. And this talks about the Gush Tanechi party. And as uh, a founder of this party, and hopefully leading it into the Knesset elections, and because my candidate list will be 50% Jewish candidates and 50% Christian candidates of all denominations, I felt it was proper to meet with the Vatican ambassador in Israel. And uh, rest in peace, it was uh, Archbishop Pietro Sambi. And uh, he confided in me in, in our one hour meeting that uh, he met with the Palestinian leadership and they said, you know, these Jews say there was a temple on the Temple Mount and of course we know there was never a temple mm -hmm. on the Temple Mount and what do you think? And so the Catholic Vatican ambassador, you know, he didn't want to get into a theological debate with the Muslims. He represents a government, the government of the Vatican. And he said, well, you know what, if you think that there was never a temple on the Temple Mount, where did Jesus overturn the money changers tables? At the temple. Sure. So if the temple never existed, Jesus didn't overturn money changers tables. Okay, where did Jesus go on Hanukkah? John 10, verse 22, he went to the feast of the dedication in the winter. The only holiday the Jews have in the winter is Hanukkah. Yeah. And Jesus was there. And then where did he have his bar mitzvah? Jesus, remember, left behind? Sure. He was 12 years old. And they took him to the synagogue and they left. Anyway, that was at the temple. Yes. Where did the apostle Paul go? To the temple, which never existed. So any attack, this is the Catholic, the Vatican ambassador in Israel saying to the Muslims, any attack on the Old Testament is an attack on the New Testament. And any attack on Judaism uh, is an attack on Christianity. Absolutely. And you know, we've seen uh, actual photographs of tons and tons of debris being excavated uh, from beneath the temple uh, platform and carried off to the dump. And in that debris, are artifacts from, right. from the uh, first and second, second temple period, right? right? So how can you deny that? Yeah, well, uh, again, it's psychosis. It's complete disconnection from reality. So if this guy is totally di disconnected from reality, how is he ever going to form a Palestinian state? It's never going to happen. Uh, another thing I wanted to share is you have the Tomb of the Patriarchs in Hebron. Mm -hmm. So UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization says, that the tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron is a Muslim holy site. Not Jewish, not Christian. I said, you know what? I would be willing to consider it if Ishmael had been buried there together with Isaac and his father, Abraham. But he's not. He's not. I would consider it if Hagar was buried there with Sarah Rebecca Leah. But she's not. I would consider it if Esau was buried there. Esau was a full-blooded brother of Jacob. He's not yes. buried there either. So the question is, <laughs> where are these guys buried? And the answer is, they're not. Now, what do we know about Ishmael? That he was a wild ass, wild donkey. Ishmael, the father of Islam, the father of the Muslim peoples. He's a wild donkey. His hand will be against all his brethren's hands. All his brethren's hands will be against his hand, and he will dwell in the face of his brethren. And he died 
in the face of his brethren. That's uh, Genesis 25. I cover it in my, uh, in my fifth book about uh, Genesis. Here. There it is, right there. And I, I go through the whole history of the relations between Ishmael and Isaac, and then, of course, Jacob and Esau. And then, of course, Abraham expels Ishmael and expels uh, Hagar. And then in the next generation, we see Esau, and that Esau was blessed, quote unquote, blessed by Isaac, you will live by the sword. What did Jesus say? He who lives by the sword Shall dies die by, by the, the sword. sword. Yeah. So Esau marries the daughter of Ishmael, who, by the way, raped and sodomized his father Isaac. It's in my book, in the fifth book, the word Mitzachek. You know, Sarah says she saw him behaving in a haughty manner. That's not what it meant. He, he actually sodomized his brother. It's a terrible thing. It's in the Bible. It's in Hebrew. Um, and so Ishmael, Hagar, are kicked out of the tribe. Esau goes off and marries the daughter of Ishmael, Machalat. And they were soldiers. They were men of the sword. And they fought one battle, two battles, 99 battles, but the 100th battle they lost. And when you lose a battle in the desert, you're going to be eaten by the buzzards. So Ishmael, Hagar, and uh, Esau were not buried in the tomb of the patriarchs, mm. and they weren't buried, period. Wow. Well, as you can imagine, uh, Avi has much more to tell, and we only have a few minutes on this update. Uh, you need to read his latest book. In fact, this is his sixth book that we have offered. We still offer the first five, and you can find them right here on this website. Check our uh, library, and, and you'll find all of Avi's books, including this one. It's called Return to Mecca, 1995, plus shipping and handling. You've got the number on your screen right now. And this book talks about the Wilderness March. Where did the Wilderness March take place? We've all read about it, Book of Numbers, 40 years marching in the desert. Where was that desert? Hmm, well, <laughs> Avi documents the fact that it was in Saudi Arabia, would you believe? Mecca and Medina are in Saudi Arabia. This book puts two and two together and comes up with some amazing prophetic conclusions. Return to Mecca by Avi Lipkin. Avi, you're always uh, uh, very, uh, f uh, cre always very creative, I should say. You seem to come up with ideas that nobody else comes up with, and that's what I love. Fresh ideas, and this certainly is a very fresh idea. Well, uh, God is a fresh God, and God is a creative God. And what all of us are trying to do is to find different keys to understanding th what God wants us to know. You know, there's a, a scripture which I'm sure you can quote to the effect that every place the foot of Israel touches, a according to a prophecy in the Old Testament, will ultimately become the property of the tribes of Israel. Right. And actually, Osama bin Laden, and this is on the cover of this book, was quoted as saying in one of his speeches, what are we going to do? What are we Muslims going to do when, the, when Israel conquers Medina and claims it as their own? Because the Saudis know, the Muslims know, that we were there and we're coming back. They know, but the world doesn't know. That is to say, most of the world is ignorant. And that's why you need to read this book, Return to Mecca. Uh, it's a documentary history. It's a study in prophecy. It's a study, by the way, in Jewish culture. Uh, have you heard about tefillin? the phylacteries that the Jews wear during certain times of prayer, uh, and, and what could that possibly have to do with re the return to Mecca? You'll find out when you read this book. Very interesting, Avi, I must say. God is an interesting God, and we have a very interesting joint history, the Jews and the Christians. Thanks for coming by again, uh, and uh, by the way, stay tuned because I'm going to keep Avi with us for one more daily update right here on Prophecy in the News. Gary Stearman reminding you to keep looking up.